being from Australia, a lot of you guys have asked me if I can get Australian watches, and that's what I've got here on the channel today. This is from Houtman Watches in Western Australia. This is their second watch. Their first was a diver. This one is more sports orientated. Jason, the owner of Houtman Watches, actually commissioned me to photograph his watches. Being a professional photographer by trade, that's what I do. And since I've got the watches here, I thought, you know what, I might as well review them as well. So, very interesting watches. I'm gonna, I'm gonna concentrate a little bit more on this one because this is probably my personal favorite. It's a high gloss dial. It's an aviator style. I love this watch. I love the look of it, but I'll speak about these as well. They're pretty much a bargain. Just a quick rundown, they're a 40 mil watch. They offer a Swiss Salida SW200. They're gonna come in at around 550 Australian dollars. So I think value for money, you really can't go wrong. There are a couple of little flaws that I found in the watches that I'd like to see changed. Things that I didn't like, but apart from that, a really value proposition from Australia. Let's check these things out. Welcome back guys. So the watch that I've got in my hand is from Houtman Watches in Western Australia. It's a 40 mil watch, it's a, it's a nice watch, it's a nice looking watch, it's a very attractive watch in my eyes. And there's four different variants. Today I'm gonna to concentrate on this because the specs are exactly the same on all of them. The main difference is the dials. So let's get stuck into it and I'll tell you the specs, what I like and what I don't like. So what I measure is a case diameter of exactly 40 millimeters. The lug to lug comes in at 47.8 mil. I measure a case height of 12.2 mil and a lug width of 20. Now the crown is a 5.8 millimeter cyan screw down crown and it features 100 meters of water resistance. And the total weight on this bracelet comes in at 159 grams and on the leather strap they come in at 87 grams. Now being a 40 mil, the footprint on my wrist, as you can see, not an issue. The lug to lug distance of 47.8 sits comfortably. That height, I measure at 12.2 millimeters on all the watches. However, the specs say they're gonna come in at around 11 mil. So we'll see what happens in the production version. The comfort on this bracelet, as you can see, you've got an on the fly micro adjustment. I haven't even peeled the stickers off on this one, but there's an on the fly. The bracelet tapers from 20 mil down to 17.8 mil. Looking closely at that bracelet, it features solid end links, as you can see. It almost falls down straight away, so it's just got that little bit of a bite just in there, but it does drop straight away this way, which is pretty cool. So female end links. You've got solid links, screw pins, a fully milled clasp, and twin triggers with an on-the-fly adjustment micro in this. So if you have a look in here, just underneath, you've got on-the-fly micro adjustability. So just by pulling that this way, you can come out or in, you've got eight millimeters of adjustment, which is fantastic. So that's been a real comfortable experience on the wrist. And as you can see the sticker, I haven't, you know what, I'll peel it off now. I haven't peeled it off all week. Oh, that felt good. Personally, I was quite attracted to this watch because of the dial. I like the high gloss black, the contrasting white Arabics, really nice job. The fact that you've just got the logo, automatic and 100 meters, nice and clean. Now the difference between the four watches in dials this particular one he's called the Aviator. It's a black high gloss dial, great legibility. It features BGW9 loom, and the look has been clean and very pleasurable. So I've enjoyed this one pretty much the most out of all of them. This second one I've got in my hands here is called Burnt Earth, and it's a salmon colored dial. There's no loom, but again, the layout is pretty much very similar to the black one. But as you can see, a slightly different handset and font on those Arabics. The next one is a sports metallic gray color. And as you can see, you've got markers rather than Arabics. Everything's loomed in BGW9. And again, the legibility on these are fantastic. And lastly, they've got River Loom. It's a very unusual watch. As you can see, legibility does suffer. It's a different looking watch and it features several types of looms. Super Luminova C1, BGW9 and UL, as well as VL in the handset. This thing shines in different types of colors in the evening. An unusual look, more of an artsy fartsy sort of watch rather than a legible experience. But you know what? Having some fun, why not? Now the case back of all watches is a nice embossed kangaroo. And I love that. Being an Australian watch, why not? Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. <laughs> Good to see some quality stuff coming out of the land down under. 
Now speaking of the movement, the watches come with a Salida SW200-1. This particular one, if I unscrew the crown, there's a single click, and as you can see, there's a ghost position. The production versions will have the no date version, so there'll be no ghost position. And with all Salidas, your standard single click, you'll hack the movement, you can adjust the time, and lock it in. Your hand winding experience, very nice resistance from that Swiss movement. And the latch down experience, first time, it locks in and you've got 100 meters of water resistance. Lastly, looking at that watch case, as you can see, you've got very fine satin brushing all the way through. You've got a very fine bevel of high polished right at the top of that lug and the top of the lugs are brushed again. It also features drilled lugs for easy strap changes. The bezel itself is a fixed bezel. It's very thin and it offers high polished on the edges and matte brushing on the top. So it's a nice looking watch, but again, like I said at the beginning of the video, not without its flaws. And some of the things that are gonna change, this is a pre-production version and in the production version, they will have some changes. And one of them I already mentioned, which was that Salida, they're gonna have the no date version, no ghost position, which is really good. Secondly, that crown, that crown comes in at 5.8 millimeters. And I've spoken to Jason, I said, that's too small. He goes, yeah, it's already in the works. They're changing it. They're gonna put a seven mil screw down crown on this, which is fantastic. I think it's exactly what it needs to those dimensions and for usability. Now, some of the negatives of the watch, for me, the first thing, probably the screw pins of this particular watch, some of the screws were not of the best quality. They weren't easy to take out. So that's just a, an observation, maybe because it's a pre-production version, I'm not sure, but the rest of the screws were good. One or two of them I struggled with. Maybe they had too much Loctite, I'm not sure, but just mentioning it for transparency's sake. Secondly, the weight. I think the weight on this bracelet, which comes in at 159 grams, that size to my 18 centimeter wrist, that's quite a bit of a hefty watch. I'm usually looking at watches that come in at around 145, 150 grams. It's about 10 grams extra. Um, and in saying that, it's not the watch head, because on the actual strap, it's 87 grams. On the actual bracelet, it's 159. So it's actually the bracelet itself. It's quite a, quite a solid piece, solid end links. Um, offering that micro adjustability, so there's a bit of weight in that bracelet. And probably the last negative or gripe that I can say about the watch is potentially that height. And the reason I say potentially because I measure 12.2 millimeters, but the specifications say 11. So again, being a pre-production, we'll see if they change, but even at 12.2, it's quite decent. It would have been nice to be a little bit lower just to have a nice smaller experience on the wrist. Moving away from that, what are the positives of the watch? value. The price of this watch is fantastic. The fact that it features a Swiss Salida, it's finished beautifully, coming in at $549 on the leather strap. The bracelet itself is I think about 80 bucks extra. That's great value. And I'll share the pricing structure. The launching price of these is going to be $549 or 370 US dollars on a couple of leather straps and that includes international shipping. And the bracelet approximately 80 bucks more. Later, the pre-order price on these is gonna be 50 bucks more, which is 600 Australian dollars or 400 USD. And the total recommended retail is 899 or 600 US dollars. The watch also offers two year warranty and it's gonna ship from Western Australia in the first quarter of 2023. I think the fact that you're getting a very decent quality watch, a very good looking watch at a good price with a great movement, that says a lot. Also coming from Australia, micro brands that are producing good quality products and I'm enjoying this seeing stuff like that coming from locals. By the time this review goes live, I think these things will be available for pre-order or launching price. I'll leave the links in the description. Let me know what you think. I found this black one the most attractive out of all of them. It's been a real nice, the, the high gloss dial with those markers and the contrast, the aviator, it just looks really nice, really smart. And not only on the bracelet, I think wearing this with maybe some rubber straps or seat belt style, a really cool, clean look and very functional indeed. You guys want to see some local Australian watches? Well, here's another one from Houtman Watch. Thanks again to Jason for sending him out for us to have a look at. Hit me up in the comments, let me know your thoughts, and we'll see you all in the next video.